All right, how's it going, everybody? Okay, how's it going, everybody? It is uh, January 16th. Bills are playing tonight. Go Bills, they're going all the way. Uh, this is my uh, weekly shop tour, I guess. So whatever we're doing, where's my camera? My camera's right there. So I just want to show you what's going on. Oh, and I had a shop tip today. Hmm, I need a shop tip. I want to do a shop tip every day. Well, we'll figure one out as we go. So what am I doing this week? Got a bunch of things going. So if you've been following me, I've been um, working on, let's switch my camera around. How do we do that? This here. Come on. There we go. So this is sort of a gift to the University of Rochester uh, birdhouse. I've been working on this little thing forever. It's, it's kind of a fun little project. Uh, how to make a fluting jig for my lathe. And I use a duplicator to duplicate these uh, columns which will go on. And for what it's worth, I'm doing half or a colonnade. So uh, I glue my two pieces together with a piece of paper. If you haven't done that, that's a great little trick. Put a piece of paper in there. Uh, then you can turn the, the, the piece and the uh, it's strong enough to kind of hold together while you're turning. But uh, weak enough to sort of pull uh, in half and I'll cut those down and mount these colonnades or, uh, along around the thing. So that's been kind of a fun project. Let me show you that duplicator. That duplicator was uh, quite interesting. It's one of those tools I saw at an auction or somewhere. And um, that's this gizmo here. So this mounts, I guess I really can't show it, but this whole thing mounts on a lathe, and there's a guide down there that, uh, or, or right here, I guess. Uh, so you mount an original between here, and then you can slide this thing in and out, up and down, and it will duplicate the uh, <clears throat> the part. So there's a part there. I just took the duplicator off. But go ahead and check on my uh, Facebook channel. I did a time-lapse video of what that duplicator is all about. Um, but it, you get exact pieces and it works really fast, really great. I made a bunch of them for, for that. I was having some blowout because the duplicator is a scraping cut. It's not a cutting cut and I was popping out these corners. So hindsight being 2020, I decided to, um, CA the corners and then I could, uh, hopefully not have that blowout. So that was that. And what else am I working on? I'm working on something kind of cool here. Let me um, spin you around. So these are pulls. So hold on, that's ooh, I'm all over the place. So this is a, a bedroom dresser that I've been working on. And I'll show you what that's about. A bedroom set, doing a four poster bed and a dresser and night stands. So that's sort of this thing here. Undermount slides. And we'll have a some nice beading drawers that will have pomely sapili inlay veneer and chagrin which is a, a, a stingray skin it's kind of like leather a little scrap of it right here so that's sort of what that is and for the poles we've been kind of playing around the 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 client is an interior designer so we kind of came up with this sort of clover leaf design. I um, CNC one of these babies out and turned and glued that on. We might make a bunch of these just out of wood. And then the inside would get either the pomely sapili uh, veneer on some of them or the chagrin. These are uh, just rough, uh, you know, kind of tests. But I also thought it'd be kind of fun to cast these out of uh, sort of uh, composite bronze. So here's one I just cast yesterday so this is basically taking a smooth on product smooth on onyx which is a a, a urethane um black uh, resin that, that sets up really really quick and if you take <coughs> bronze powder this is real bronze powder put the bronze powder in there and you get a bronze casting obviously you can't feel but this has a really a really nice uh, weight to it so it feels like it and you could probably see here that um, since it has bronze powder, it will polish up. So if you can see the sheen there, 
So you could also take a patina if you wanted. So that was a, a thought, and that would kind of be a nice contrast if you put the pomely Sapili in there with the bronze. So I'm still uh, kind of playing with that. I was on one mold. I actually took another one, and I put a center dot in there, and then I wanted some texture, and BBs were too large, so I put uh, candy uh, sprinkles just to kind of create little spheres, and that's sort of what that one looks like kind of looks just black but when you polish this up and you rub some black wax in there that texture will really stand out and I thought that might be kind of fun so we're still trying to figure out what we want to do there and with the extra material I always like to have a mold uh, left over so I can pour extra material I had a bunch of old crystals so I uh, stuck them in all uh, a, a, a thing of clay which I put in a gl uh, plastic cup and then this will be hard to polish but I do have a sandblaster, but I can hit this and you can see that there, you know, some shininess there. And if I sandblast this with some soda ash or walnut shells, <clears throat> it might be kind of cool. Put some acid on there to give a, uh, a patina and bronze crystals. I don't know if that really exists, but I thought that might be a nice uh, box lid or something. Kind of cool. So that's what uh, that's doing. I'm still working on this piece here if you've been following this uh piece more of a sculptural piece and i've uh inlaid or attached uh, opals this is the opals that i i love playing with that's uh our crushed opal from easy inlay and uh more of a sculptural piece i'm doing that and i wanted to bring it down the edge so i use pattern wax this is sticky wax you it so it can form to the curve and I used that to lay the opal on, and then there were some pits and whatnot, so I put it back on and put a, a couple layers of uh, CA glue to kind of fill up any pits and whatnot. I'll peel that off, sand this all flush, and we'll have this sort of rim that goes around. This is just going to hang and display. Uh, you know, I don't know what it is. It's just art. So that's, that's kind of fun. I always got little projects working on. And then I've been uh, playing with this laser. So this laser has been really good um jp hey mike um <clears throat> uh oh you're almost out of my opal just saying okay send me an email uh so i bought this this was one of these um facebook ads you see and you know you're never skeptical but i, I don't know it's, it's a laser um author author uh and i don't know it was like 350 bucks or something during the black friday and i said well let's give it a try uh, and I've been using it to sort of uh, kind of engrave, trying to get it to cut out the, um, the veneer. Uh, I couldn't do it in one pass. And the software that, that comes with this is uh, called Gerbil or Gerbil. Uh, and, I, and I was having problems trying to, uh, I don't know much about lasers. So I know you can increase uh, the laser, which I had it on full power, but I wanted to slow the speed down and I couldn't get that to work. So I just downloaded Lightburn. So if anybody knows how to use Lightburn, give me give me a call because or give me shoot me an email. I might have some questions. You know how it is when you're working uh, <laughs> when you're working with uh, new programs. You just need that first six buttons to get you started. So I've watching YouTube forever. I hate the learning curve um, on that, but I think there's some uh, there's some potential here in in cutting veneer. So. Um, Thanks. I try to share what I know. So uh, I see someone you your inside out art piece. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, we have fun. Um, anyhow, I think there's a lot of potential with this as much as I sort of like to do the handcrafted uh, sort of uh, touch on my uh, that's this thing here. Uh, this is where I do most of my um, marquetry on my uh, 32 inch scroll saw, there is a case to be made for uh, doing things in multiples. And that's what that's why I'm trying to do this for those uh, inlays. So, you know, I, I'm not opposed to, to doing anything. So yeah, scroll pull, that's it. <laughs> so what size is your scroll saw, JP? <laughs> um, this is really the, 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 let's talk about scroll saws. Right here. So this is the Cadillac. Uh, it's a um, Somerville 32 inch. 
And um, on this particular one, I actually have a, a, a pedal that lifts up the head, which is kind of cool. And, uh, oh, here we go. Tip of the day. Okay, I got a tip of, day, tip of the day for you. You have two. Well, I have two, too. Um, <clears throat> this was uh, given to me by a student, and I think it's a great idea. So here's my tip. Uh, Excalibur. Yep, yeah, Excalibur is great. That's what this is. Um, so to store your, your uh, blades, you know, where do you store them? Normally, you have them in these little tubes that they come in, and that's always a pain in the ass, and keeping them, you know, keeping them organized, and you take one bit out, and you don't want to put it back in the tube. So uh, someone made this. Now watch this. This is... Ah, ah, ah. There are magnets in there, so I think that's brilliant. In addition, there, those magnets help you hold it on to onto the, the, uh, the scroll saw arm. So I can put my uh, blades in there and they won't fall out. The next thing I need to do is, is label these four holes. I primarily work in uh, two aught, uh, which is a scroll saw blade in a, in a, a double skip. And uh, I should probably, these are obviously larger ones. I don't even know what these are. These might be a number two for when I'm doing uh, wood. Here's a, a template I was doing. Uh, uh let's see built in for your plastic love the magnet yeah the magnets are great all you need to do is drop your container once and they're all over the floor and trying to figure out what's what so i thought that was a great idea and for what it's worth i even use it to hold you know when you have to drill a hole what do you do with your little uh uh drill bit so i put that on there too so that's kind of that's kind of a great little feature so there's my tip of the day. Oh, another tip of the day. Two for the price of one. I also have a tape dispenser on here. If you're not on here, right size tape, but I took a masking tape dispenser and screwed it on. I'm left-handed, but you put that on here. I don't use this size tape. But if you're working and you want to tape your stuff together as you're making long cuts, this is another great, um, great tip for your scroll saw. Uh, so I can, I don't have to have, you know, I also have one down here, um, clear tape, but I usually put a blue masking tape or yellow or purple tape up here. So while I'm working, I can, I can tape and continue to go. And lastly, uh, let's see, pan down is zero clearance is always a good idea. So I have a piece of Sintra. Sintra is a sort of uh, white plastic and easy to cut, but it's, it creates a zero clearance. So if you're working on real brittle wood, you're not blowing through. Or and I, I don't do much hardwood. Uh, I use uh, use this for marquetry and for my veneer work. But having a zero clearance is also great too. So, woo! There you go. So there's three for the price of one. So those are my tips of the day, and I think that's uh, that's it. Oh, here's another one. Okay, yeah. Let's turn this around. Let's see here. So watch for this. Um, uh, Woodcraft just sent me this one uh, for a tool review. This is a new skill router that they're carrying. And, um, you know, I'm a Festool kind of guy. As, as far as I'm concerned, Festool is like the best router out there. And, um, but yeah, they're, you know, up to $1,000. I think they're $2,200 is 1000 bucks. So that's a little pricey. And I think this is like $100 or something. So I've opened it up. I looked at it just briefly. It actually looks pretty good. So uh, look for that. I'll be doing a tool review on the new skill saw or skill router. What's the model number on this? I don't even know what the model number on this is. 14 amp. Wait, you think they have a model number? Well, anyhow. Oh, here it is. The uh, RT1322. 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 Uh, Festool tools. I have the 2200, the 14. I have them all. How about that? Um, including all the accessories. So I have the 2200, the 1400, and the 1100, and all the accessories. So if you don't know about the accessories, I got more accessories uh, than I know what to do with uh, because I teach on um, 32 millimeter system and. Um, the, you know, uh, they have a whole system for the accessories. I'm trying to work my camera here as I'm trying to talk and chew gum. Uh, the one I use most is the 2200, you know, just because that's the, it's actually the most powerful router on the market. Um, 
I think Triton says they're powerful too, but I do believe it's it's not about horsepower because you can't really convert the horsepower. It's all about amperage. So I think the Festool is the highest amperage uh, router. And it's a beast. And they also, um, that particular one, I love their dust collection system. They have a, a hood that drops down and you can really router dust free. So that's a great one. If you guys, what time do we have here? Well, let me, um, if you're really interested, I will show you that right now. So let's pull that baby out. You know, obviously if I'm doing small, smaller work, uh, I'll use the 1400. The uh, 1100 I use uh, really just for the, for the um, 32 millimeter system. But if you guys want a real router, that's, that's the beast to have. And the reason I like this is they have this skirt and you press this button here. Oh my God, working backwards. So you take this button here and it drops that skirt down. And when you're plunging, uh, it completely encloses this whole thing. And by using the dust collection, the Festool dust collection hooked up to it, it really sucks everything out. So that's, um, that's the one I use most just because it's uh, powerful. And I'm usually doing um, thick hardwood, eight quarter table edging and things like that. So I want, I want a, um, a strong router, but it's not always about the router. It's about the, uh, the router bit. So that's really what you want to pay attention to. And I like to use a, um, compre what's called the compression bit. It's solid carbide spiral up and down. If you don't know what that is, we will show you one of those. Let's kind of go over here. And roll this out of the way. So compression bits look like that. So uh, this is a spiral bit, but it, it's the top three quarters spirals down. Um, yeah, the fourteen hundred is a, the fourteen hundred is is, a, is really good all around. I mean, it does no, don't get me wrong. It is it is a good router. As I said, I. I'm doing, um, I'm doing a lot of uh, heavy, uh, heavy duty hardwood edging. You know, I'm routering, you know, two inches of material and I want a lot of power. Uh, also when I do template work, um, I'm boring down through three quarter inch or one inch MDF and I'm making a full cut. I'm cutting on both sides. It's a plunge cut and I want to cut all the way through in one pass. So. Uh, that's it. But the 1400 is a nice one. So don't, 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 uh, I'll pull that one out too. But as far as the router bit, a lot of it has to do with sharp router bits. So don't always get fooled by horsepower and the size of the router. Um, you really, you, you really want to have sharp bits like anything on a table saw, any, any cutting tool. The blade is really one of the most important things about routing. Um, if you, if the blade is not sharp, you're going to have to push harder, more strain on the motor. And, um, yeah, it is a lot cheaper. I think the 2200 is like a thousand bucks. I don't know what the 1400 is. $600. Maybe you know that. Uh, so, uh, getting, getting a sharp, uh, router, uh, router bit is good. And then, so reducing blowout, a compression bit, you've probably heard of spiral bits, spiral bits will, um, either spiral up or spiral down and there is a so there is a uh, a spiral bit right and this is as it spins the cut is forcing down because i do a lot of veneer work so this prevents chip out right as as the as it's not it's, it's kind of slicing the material as it goes down but if you have the bottom veneered also then you have a tendency to blow out spiral downs are great for cutting all the way through uh, but if you're only doing sort of a, 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 a rabbit or a dado, it's driving the, uh, the sawdust into the groove and can compact the, the, um, Brian Fitz UK. All right. So it can compact the sawdust into the groove. So I use a, um, a compression bit. So this, the top two thirds. It's spiraling down. The bottom uh, quarter is spiraling up. Two thirds and a quarter. Two thirds. 
No, three three quarters and one quarter. Woo! So uh, the bottom pulls up, and now you have uh, the cutting shear going down on the top, and the bottom is, is pulling up, and you reduce your uh, chip out when working with veneer. And it also works with hardwood also. Um, so check out a, a uh, compression uh, solid carbide bit. And I didn't know this was going to turn into a... <sighs> Festool router demo, but what the hell? That's what this is for. I'm just kind of going to try to do these once a week and answer questions and, and you know, show you what I'm doing. So, the 1400 um, is a great one also. It, it doesn't have the, um, the dust collection. So, that's really why I sort of like the 2200 because of the dust collection. Um, that is, um, get over here. So that's the reason why I like the 2200, but this is a nice midsize. I don't know if it has the amp. It must have the amp amperage on here. So this is a uh, 12 amps and the 2200 is, we did a photo shoot and I had to cover up all the labels is 15 amp. So that's the difference, but this is a, a, a nice one. This has the D, you know, D handle or the offset handle. Um, the accessory pack is great that goes with these. So, uh, so that's good. Uh, they're kind of a compression bit. So I don't know if I can scroll through what this lesson. What advice would you give for someone who is a bit intimidated by routers? Yeah, that would be me. And. Uh, Routers are probably the most versatile tools uh, out there, literally. I mean, if you think about it with a router, you can, you can cut material with it. You can uh, profile materials with it. You can do dados. You can, you can do all sorts of stuff with routers. And a lot of people uh, don't, don't think about all the jigs and whatnot. So with a router, uh, if you're intimidated by it, start with a router table. So you can uh, use a router table. I have a, um, oh, a Rockley router table. You can make your own. So simply take your router and mount it with a piece of plywood and plunge the bit up and put it on some saw horses, and there you go. And that is a much safer way to work. The bit's coming up, and the, the material that you're working on is a lot more, a lot more stable. So I would certainly uh, get a router table. Let me go and show you what that's about. So if you don't know what a router table is, you can go through my things. Oh, I have a Bosch. So there's there's my router table. It's you know, a simple thing. Router mounts over there. I think I got a porter cable under that one. Very simple way uh, to work. So I, I definitely like, would recommend a router table for uh, first time users. But again, you don't really need it. It's kind of nice because it turns on and off easy, but boy, just, just mounting it to a, Mounting it to a um, a table or by the Ultimate Router Base. Ah, so for those in the UK, here's the deal. I don't know if you know about my Ultimate Router Base and you think I would have one out here. Oh, I do in my uh, thing. But I've been working on this project for uh, probably, uh, I would say, it's more than, more than five years now. And... Uh, it really came uh, a way of being for my students. So I was um, working with templates, and if you know about routers, here let's let's come around here. This is what you need for your ultimate for your for for intimidated. Let me uh, every time I switch around, it's reversed. Okay, so if you're routing on an edge, right? The center of the gravity of the router bit or the router can be is is off overhanging the edge, and it's it's easy for the router to tip. Uh, so by mounting a router on an offset router base, let's get this out of the way, right? Gives you more stability because uh, you have all the surface area and a lot more control. So that and so it's a safer way to go. So I would recommend getting one of these. And with it said, if you're working with templates. And template guides you need an offset router base that accepts a template guide and uh, so that's where I actually started to I just wanted to buy one of these and nobody makes it nobody sells 
a offset router, ba router base that accepts a standard inch and three eighths template guide. So I started making these and then went through a whole iteration. I added all sorts of features. You can go to Imagine, uh, Imagine Woodworking if you want more about this. But I'm happy to say that uh, Woodcraft picked it up and uh, it'll be in all the Woodcraft stores. But that doesn't help you guys out in the UK. There is the Two Works is going to be carrying it. That's Peter Sefton's school and, and tool supply. But for what it's worth, this is a bonehead move. When I was um, sending my drawings over to be um, printed, I was like, well, I teach in the UK and they work in metric. So let's put a metric scale on here. And for what it's worth, I put the wrong metric school. I had 100 millimeters, 200 millimeters, so on and so forth. And then one of my Norwegian students pointed at 1600 millimeters or and he's like you know i'm this tall so it was supposed to be one 100 millimeters 110 120 as opposed to 100 200 300 so i had an etching error everything else on the uh router uh base was correct so with that said we have 300 of them made they're all sold i think i have one left here in the states but i actually have 18 in the in london and if anybody is interested in this, they're deeply discounted. I'm just trying to get rid of them. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, getting that. So if you're interested, email me, direct me, or message me, and I can make arrangements uh, for you to do that. We can do a PayPal thing, and, and my buddy over there will, will ship it out to you. So that's a super deal. But uh, for if you're intimidated with working about routers, use an offset router base, mine, or make your own, and or router table. So that's... Uh, that's my bit about routers. Woo! Didn't know where we were going on this one. So, I hope everybody's um, staying safe. Crazy times. Really crazy times. Wear your mask. And thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Share, like, buttons, all that stuff. I'm just going to continue to do the live things. Although I'm not sure if I should just go live or I should record it first and then post it at a certain time. But um, I don't think I can go live at a specific time every week. That's just not going to happen. So, because uh, I like the live things, you can ask questions. I think that's what it's about. So, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Imagine Woodworking or Imagine Grove. I got a free newsletter there that uh, I send out. And that's the platform I send out when I'm doing courses. Oh, I'm doing a course tomorrow. So, you want to learn how to inlay uh, bugs, beetles, dragonflies uh, with resin and metal and uh, minerals. I'm doing a course tomorrow live at noon Eastern time. So go to Imagine uh, Woodworking and there's a sign up sheet there. So that's a, that's, that's what else is happening. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Okay. Stay safe. Bye-bye.